talk San Jose poker. There's two main casinos in San Jose, and they're right next to each other. The Bay 101 and the Matrix. Uh, I played three days straight before I went to Yosemite, and then I played two days straight afterwards. And in those five days, I racked up 65 hours of playing. My longest set, uh, session was 10 hours. My shortest session was two hours, but my average is about five. What I was doing was I was waking up in the morning and playing for five or six hours from nine to two-ish. And then I was playing a later session from seven till midnight. Uh, and in between the time, I'd kind of go to the gym, get a shower, and relax, do some videos, whatever I needed to work on, read, take a nap. So San Jose, the blinds are two, three, five, which is kind of interesting, um, with the $2 blind being on the button. And the, uh, the buy-ins are 100 to 500, so it's a little bit shallow. There were deep, deep stack games, which I play a little bit in, and then there were bigger games too. Uh, sat 510 for maybe 45 minutes uh did all right but i followed kind of a whale at my table over there and he played 40 minutes doubled up and left so once he left there weren't that many players at the table that i would be thrilled to be in a big pot against so i left um my f first session was actually two hours. And I was at Bay 101, playing deep stack, in for a thousand, run really well the first hour, hour and a half, and get it up to 1400. And then we get 100. 40 big blinds and that's only because there's a straddle on it's really 280 big blinds in a 235 game in we get it all in pre-flop we have aces versus tens i go i asked him if he wants to run it twice he goes nope only once 10 in the window so that hurt but with all that said and done we got 67 hours in playing exclusively 235 outside of an hour 510 and we we ran really well besides that one hand our flips were flips and we just had the better hand and a better strategy that prevailed so uh people were wondering about the hourly rate here and this is kind of where i want my two five hourly rate to be we ended up making 53 dollars an hour over the 67 hours with a six day Yosemite vacation in the middle. So I'm gonna release this poker video first and then the Yosemite video will follow up. But uh, really like San Jose. It's a good, good room. The Matrix is nice, it's clean. Good sushi, good service. The floor guys there are awesome. Floor guys and girls there are awesome. They do a great job, the dealers are good. It's clean, it's nice. The, the staff's just friendly. Really, really recommend it over Bay. They also take a dollar less rake, I'm pretty sure. So if you're in San Jose, check it out. They do a good job. So let's check out some hands. So in this hand, uh, I like to raise queen jack of hearts under the gun plus one after we have one limp in front of us to $20. The hijack button, big blind, and under the gun all call. So we're going five ways to a flop. And the flop comes four, four, three with two hearts. So we flop two overs and a flush draw, queen eye flush draw. And when two people check to us, we elect to lead for $55. Um, in a five way pot, queen high with backdoor hearts is about the worst hand I'm gonna continue with. Five way pots, you pretty much have to play straight forward. Uh, we get a call here from under the gun, and the turn is the ace of hearts, which is our gen card. Uh, we have the second nuts now, 
under the gun checks and hard on the river can really kill our action so i think we have to continue here and we make it a hundred and ten dollars kind of what i noticed re-watching the video is the way i'm flipping the chips right here is something i never do in a hand so i just think i'm really comfortable here um and he jams over the top for 320 and we snap it off there's going to be some of the time where we run into like king ten of hearts king nine of hearts but nothing you can do uh river rolls off six of hearts now we're losing also to ace king with king of hearts but i say queen i flush he says good and uh just showing here that we got him covered nice little pot So under the gun limps, cut off limps, and I raise the twenty dollars from the button uh, with pocket fives. Small blind comes along, and both limpers call. So we go four ways to a flop, and flop is nine five deuce uh, rainbow. So pretty much as good as it can get. And I've been continuing a lot, so when it's checked to me. On a pretty dry board, I continue, which is something I would do with two high cards, uh, over pairs, and a bunch of, I guess, straight draws. Uh, we bet 40, and everyone calls. So, running pretty good right now. Flop a middle set on dry board and getting four callers. Turn is an ace of clubs, and it checks to me, and I elect to check it back. When everyone just calls the flop and then checks back the turn on an ace, I think that I'm the one most likely to have a big ace here, so now it's really hard for someone to call. This might have been a mistake, just because there's a lot of ace threes, ace fours in people's ranges uh, on that type of flop. But anyways, we checked it. River is a deuce of clubs. And under the gun leads out for $75. So we rivered fives full and we get a bet and a call in front of us. Um, we're obviously raising, um, hoping that someone has a backdoor flush or a three, four, or maybe is getting squirrely with ace five or ace nine or two. Uh, we make it 245. Uh, small bind quickly folds. Under the gun here only has 35 more dollars. We know that he is pretty much always calling after leading 75, but we're trying to target. Cut off stack. He folds showing ace three. So I think he would have called a turn bet, but I don't know if he would have called a river bet. So this might have worked out best for us checking. So, so in this hand under the gun, I open queen nine of spades to $20 and get five callers. Uh, since we don't have any fold equity here, it seems like at this table, I don't think queen nine is an open. But as played, the flop comes nine, eight, four with two spades. So we flop top pair and a queen high flush draw. Two people checked us and I continue for $65. Uh, into a pot of 120, so right around half pot. Under the gun, plus one flats. So with two spades on the board, he could have flush draws, top pair, straight draws. Uh, I don't think he has two pair or sets in his range. He only has about $200 behind. And I think he's just going to get it in there. Middle position elects to re-raise to 265. Which to me means two things. He either has a big draw or a set or two pair. I just go ahead and jam it in. We immediately get called under the gun plus one and middle position calls two for 620. And this is where queen nine 
can really get us in trouble. If we're up against even a hand as weak as ace nine and a bigger flush draw, we're kind of in a lot of trouble. But most likely what we're gonna be up against here is gonna be a set and a bigger flush draw. The only hands that we're really getting it in good with are 10 seven of spades, uh, six five of spades, seven six of spades, jack 10 of spades, there's really not a lot of hands. The good news is that queen nine doesn't block any of those hands. And against ace 10 alone, we actually have a lot of equity. And against pocket eights, we're not doing too bad. But when you're against both those hands, we really don't play that well. So we're actually gonna look at some equities here. This is a site that I use, it's called Card Player. If you just Google Hold'em Equity Calculator, it's going to come right up. We're doing some math here. Luckily, the big stack had a set, and the small stack had the better flush draw. So I'm still going to make a little bit of money on this hand. But really, the problem is with opening Queen Nine of Spades. It's just not good enough to open. Under the gun, late position, yes, it's a raise. But under the gun, it's just really tough to play. And we're going to get in bad spots like this. And luckily, we, we got lucky. We just ran good here. But uh, yeah, if you just Google Hold'em Equity Calculator, this is what's going to kind of come up. And you're going to see here, against both hands, we have a 2.77% chance of winning. So we need running nines, running queen nine, or queen queen. Not looking too good. Uh, as played against those hands we kind of mentioned, the smaller flush draws were, were looking really good, or against an individual flush draw, as you can see here, we're actually favored against ace 10 of spades, who has two overs and any spade is good, just having the pair there. And here we are against a set, and we're only about 30% equity. So got really lucky to come out with a little bit of profit going up against those two hands in particular. This hand we look down at ace, ace, pocket rockets, and middle position opens to 20, and from the hijack, we make a small three bet to $55. With all our really premium hands here, I really like the small three bet, trying to get everyone to continue. The big blind calls and the initial raiser calls. So we go the race of the flop of ace, jack, six, top set, uh, with the two diamonds and uh, all the straight draws out there, I really like continuing. And I like to lead pretty small here for 80. The big blind folds and middle position calls. The turn is a nine of spades. So any diamond draw here, that I can almost think of at least has a gutter now with this card. So there's a lot of straight draws if he had two diamonds or, or now he has a pair and a flush draw. So this is where I'm gonna try to get my value. Uh, when I look over a stack, I think he has $410. So I bet 220 into a pot of 330, which is two thirds pot. And I think it's gonna be hard for him to fold 180 on the river. He calls and then he tells me he has 500 behind. So I thought I was playing against a stack of 180 and now I realize that we're playing with my stack, which I have $440 behind. The river comes at three of hearts. He checks. And I'm really happy about the news that he has 500 behind. And uh, I'd like to go all in here for $440. I have one stack behind here holding up the phone. And middle position goes into the tank. I wasn't paying the most attention to this table. I'd been here a while. But this guy kind of recently sat down. 
and uh, kind of ran up a big stack. And I, I, I guess I thought he just lost a little bit. But I realized he was coloring up to go play 5, 10, 20. He was just waiting on a seat at the bigger game. And against an aggressive opponent like that, the turn bet really helped me out. But I just, paying attention would have been a lot more beneficial beneficial in this hand in particular. He goes into the tank here and he asks me if my stack 100 is a stack 100. So at this point, I need to cut it out just to show everything here. So I try to hold the phone uh, even here, but in moving the stack, I end up moving the phone. He eventually ends up calling and we have the nuts, so can't lose.